These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Well, first of all, what is the general name for this type of functional group? Alcohol. Good. Do you know what the name for this particular alcohol is? Uh, butanol? Excellent. It's called bute because there's, excuse me, it's called bute because there's four carbons. Now, a lot of students don't realize that the and has a separate meaning. It's called and because there's no double bonds. If there was a double bond, there would be an in here. Or if there was a triple bond, there would be an ein here. So the an actually has a separate meaning from the bute. And it's not too hard to remember that the suffix for alcohols is ol, because that's the same as the suffix from the word alcohol. Great. Oh, actually, not so great. This is not the full name, because you also have to say where the alcohol group is. Oh, do you start counting from the side that the functional group's on? Or from well, you want to try to give the lowest possible number okay. to the functional group. So, so one butanol? Yeah. <laughs> now, actually, you might get full credit here. Well, well probably not. Um, actually, sometimes it's kind of assumed that if you don't give the number, it's the one version. But he it's still safer. Leave one off, but oh, he did say that. Yeah, but okay. I always put it on just okay. when I don't forget. Just because it's safer. I'm having two ways to do it. Let's try naming this compound. That would be a two butanol. Good. But that's not the full name. There's something else that we need to add here. We should start the numbering from the left to the lower numbers. Mm -hmm. Is this a stereo center? Oh, yeah, so, so. it's R. Oh, that was very R. fast. R? You can do that in your head, huh? Good. So here's number one, two, and three priorities. Not that you can't confuse with my numbers, but uh, this is easier because the number four is already pointing away from yeah. us. So this is clockwise. R to butanol. All right, a lot of students lose points on nomenclature because they forget to put in the stereochemistry. But there was a big clue here because they used the wedges and the dashes. So yeah, so you should definitely remember to put in the stereochemistry. And I know it. I know that well too. I always forget to write it in. Yeah, you, it's good to get the points that uh, for the stuff that you know. Let's try naming this. Take your time and try to work that out on paper. Like this. Oh, is this what you were thinking? Yeah. Happy with that? Okay, let's check that. Now, it looks like you, uh, so um, I think you've correctly seen that alcohols get suffixes and halogens get prefixes. So we use a prefix for bromo, but still the suffix for the alcohol. Why did you start the numbering from the right and not from the left? Well, if you have a choice, you want to give the suffix the lowest possible number, not the prefix the lowest possible number. So we're giving the suffix the lowest possible number by starting the numbering from the right. So that's uh, that. So the bromine is on the number four carbon, and the alcohol is on the number two. You saw this was a stereo center, and you determined this is the number one priority. Number Actually, two. I thought, oh, it needs two letters. Oh, maybe you didn't think about this one. I didn't. I just right. did the OH. OK. So, so let's step back and do that bromine then. OK. 
So it's going to be, I'm never sure what order they go in. I think it would be 2S4R, 4 bromo 2 pentanol. Like this? Yeah. Okay, let's check that. I think you're on the right track there now. So priorities one, two, three, and four. Now the hydrogen here is already pointing away from us, so we can simply see that one, two, and three are arranged clockwise. Mm -hmm. So you're right, four R. Mm -hmm. That's correct, four R. And now let's check your work for the other stereo center. So our priorities here are one, two, three, and four. Now, it seems like you have a, a way that's working for you here, but the most reliable way for me to do the, the numbering here is, this is a little inconvenient because the number four is not pointing away from us. So what I would do is I would swap it so it is pointing away from you. That's what I do too. Ah, okay, excellent, very good. Looks like you're just doing that in your head. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I know the other way is to like picture the it moving or something. Yeah, that's too confusing for me. Yeah, I just okay. did that. Okay, very good. And we can just swap the numbers. So I can swap the number four so it's pointing away from us. And now one to two to three are arranged counterclockwise? Oh, yeah, but now you have to switch it back. That's right. So what we've just seen here is if the number four were pointing away from us, we would have an S configuration. Yeah. So what was the configuration of the original molecule before the swap? Well, for that we use the single swap rule that I've mentioned to you a couple of times. The molecule before the swap must have been an R. But I, the reason I screwed up here is because I put the hydrogen on the other side. I don't think that would make any difference. Let me show you that. Are you saying you drew it like this? Yeah, and then I numbered, so I went one, one. Did you put these priorities in? This is the number two, this is the number three? three four. I did, yeah, I did that. Now we should still swap the number one and the number four. Yeah, I did that. And now, what's the configuration of one to two to three? It's the same. It's still still counterclockwise. I think maybe you just made a careless mistake the first time you went through this. Oh, maybe. Okay. Yeah, I had the same thing. I don't know why I put S. So a second ago, I was saying that um, uh, I was uh, remarking that I noticed that you were doing this in your head, and that's great if you can get it right in your head. But I usually find I make mistakes when I try to do this no, in my head. I yeah. actually wrote it down. Huh. I'm not sure how I did it. Because see, I had my numbers here. I had this is one. I just left out four and put this is three. And then I crossed them out and made this three and this one. And so I was going this way, which is S. So I should. I think I just didn't switch it back to R. Yeah, let's talk about that. I don't think that method is going to be reliable for you. Let me show you what's wrong with that. By skipping the four? Yeah, so let me cut up again. It's good to go over this because you'll definitely see this one fast. This must be how I got it wrong when I went through. So I think that you're saying that what you did is you swapped the one and the three. No, I didn't write three. I went, I wrote one, two, and then the hydrogen was the three. I think I just oh. forgot to swap it back to R. I just left three out. And I went, one, Okay, two, well that could easily mess you up right there. So one thing yeah, I would say is out. draw in the hidden hydrogen. Yeah. Draw in the hidden hydrogen and assign all four priorities. Okay. Draw in the hidden hydrogen and assign all four priorities. Um, and we've got to swap the, the, the number four because the, the, the official method for determining R and S, in the official method, you're supposed to rotate the molecule until the number four is pointing away from you. Therefore, the only reliable way to do this is to draw a molecule where the number four is pointing away from us. So we can't make any, um, we can't, uh, so we actually have to draw in the number four priority in order for the method to work. I skipped the methyl group for some reason. The, the methyl group over here? Yeah, for some reason okay. I numbered everything but that. So take your time is the lesson. Oh, okay. Well, what I've been doing on the board is modeling what I think good notation for these types of problems is. So a good notation is actually assign all four numbers. You might want to circle the numbers so you don't get them confused with your IUPAC numbers. Because uh, it's good to have the IUPAC numbers in there as well. And then, if the number four is not already pointing away from you, you need to swap it so that it is pointing away from you. And then we can use the official method to find the configuration after the swap. So after the swap, our configuration here is S. But we wanted to know what the configuration was before the swap. Well, since it differs by a single swap, it must be the opposite of S, which is R. 
This actually is not a very time consuming method. And I always actually physically write down the first letter and then cross it out. Just writing down a couple extra steps makes me much less likely to make careless mistakes. So, so in fact, we have 2R, 4R? Yes. Good. And it looks like you already knew that if you've got more than one stereo center, you simply number them so that the reader knows who each letter refers to. So this is the right way to write it. I think these are usually put in parentheses here. So that's right. I think these are usually put in numerical order as far as these are concerned. So 2R and then 4R. And the rest of the name, I guess, didn't give us too much trouble. <laughs> 